women aren't making much headway in New Jersey when it comes to holding public office. That's the conclusion of the annual New Jersey County Report Card from the Center for American Women in Politics, a unit of the Eagleton Institute of Politics at Rutgers. Women made some incremental gains as county commissioners and in municipal council offices, but the state had fewer women mayors this year when compared to last. I recently sat down with Jean Sidstack, Associate Director of the Center for American Women in Politics, where she directs the group's program for women public officials. Jean, 2022 is being described as a disappointing year for women in Jersey politics. On the national level, we are seeing women make gains in politics, so why not here at the local level in Jersey? Well, I think that's a, a very important question that we've been studying for a long time. Um, it seems that we've plateaued here in New Jersey, basically are stagnating. I think that's the story of women in New Jersey politics, that um, we're gaining very small incremental ground uh, at the county and local levels. But in terms of women mayors, we've actually lost ground over the last year. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, are women being recruited to run for office uh, at the same rates that men are? Um, is there an environment, an atmosphere in the state that makes it um, and, you know, hospitable place for women who are thinking about running for office. It's interesting that some areas of the state fare better. In Union County, for instance, there's a greater share of women mayors. So any idea why that is? Do some of these local counties just have a better network uh, and support for female politicians? That's definitely something that we see. What we've learned through the years is that efforts to diversify the pool of people serving in office really succeed when they're intentional. So when, you know, party chairs, for example, or other elected leaders or influencers in the community make a concerted effort to widen the pool of candidates um, in their towns or their districts, those efforts really pay off. You know, you're seeing that. It's not the only story, but in some cases where women are doing better, it's because there have been really focused efforts to recruit and support women candidates. And in places where that's not happening, we see fewer women running for and serving in office. And can you touch on why diversity in general in representation is good at the local level? Well, you want to have as diverse a pool of candidates and um, as diverse a uh, government, you know, represented body as you possibly can, because different people bring different perspectives to policymaking, different life experiences help shape the policies. Um, and so, you know, when you have a government that looks like the people it serves, it will um, do a better job of creating policies that serve the wider needs, you know, the entire community. So we want more women and other newcomers to, uh, to serve on these government boards and uh, bodies. Your organization has a campaign training program for women. It's called Ready to Run. How does that help interested candidates get ready? So the Ready to Run campaign training program is nonpartisan. It's for any and all women who are planning to run for office or thinking about running in the future and just want to get involved and learn more about how to build their public leadership skills. Um, the program offers the nuts and bolts of running for office. You learn how to work with the media. You learn how to set up a campaign plan. You know, you learn fundraising skills and all these other really important skills that you need to get ready to run. And more importantly, you also tap into a network of other women in the state who will help you run for office, who will provide um, all kinds of support and um, encouragement. And that makes a huge difference. Jean, so good to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time today. Oh, thank you so much for having me.